In the final part of our lecture series, we will discuss vector multiplication. Now, how do we multiply two vectors together? So there is more than one way to do this. The dot product gives a number as an answer. This is a scalar, not a vector. While the cross product of two vectors is another vector that is at right angle to both vectors. The dot product of vector f of t and g of t here is the sum of the multiplication of the component functions that belong to the same axis. So we would get f of t dot g of t as equal to the sum of x1 t multiplied by x to t and y1 t multiplied by y to t Let's find the dot product of vector A and B We have A dot B as multiplied by 4 plus 2 which would give us 4 plus that is 2 we have here the dot product of vector A and B as 32 which is a number or a scalar Let's learn about the properties of the dot product. The dot product of vectors A and B is equal to the dot product of vectors B and A. This is called the commutative property. The distributive property states that the dot product of vector A with vectors B plus C is equal to the dot product of vector A and B plus the dot product of vector A and C. When we have a scalar multiplied by a vector dot another vector B, this could be written as the scalar multiplied by the dot product of vectors A and B or A dot the scalar multiplied by the vector B. The dot product of vector A and 0 is equals to 0 and similarly the dot product of 0 and vector A is equals to 0. The dot product of vector A by itself is simply the magnitude of vector A square. Another method used to find the dot product of two vector functions is by multiplying the magnitude of both vectors and the cosine of the angle between them. By modifying this formula, we would get cos theta as a dot b divided by the magnitude of a multiplied by the magnitude of b. This formula helps us find the angle where it is simply the arc cos of a dot b divided by the magnitude of vector a multiplied by the magnitude of vector b. What happens when theta is pi over 2 radian? Cos pi over 2 is 0 and so we have a dot b equals to the magnitude of a multiplied by the magnitude of b multiplied by 0. We could conclude that when the dot products of two vectors is 0, these vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular. Let's try out this example. Find the dot product of f of t and g of t. This is simply t square multiplied by t over 2 plus
square root of t multiplied by negative t. Here we have t cubed over 2 plus e to the t cos t minus square root of t cubed. t cubed plus 2 e to the t cos t minus 2 square root of t cubed. This example asks us to find 5t square multiplied by the dot product of f of t and g of t. So based on our previous example, the dot product of f of t and g of t is cube we have here 5 d square with 2 multiplied root of d cube the cross product of two vectors requires the knowledge of the determinant of matrices we've learned this before to find f of t cross g of t, we find the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix where i, j and k is at the top row, the components of f of t in the second row and the components of g of t in the third row. If you still remember the method to find the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, we would insert the plus minus plus sign. We find the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix multiplied by plus i, another 2 by 2 matrix multiplied by negative j and one more multiplied by plus k so what are these two by two matrix we simply hide the first column and the first row and we have here t set one t Similarly, we would hide the second column and the first row for J. And again, the third column and the first row. Our answer would be y1t multiplied by z2t minus y2t multiplied by z1t i. The cross product of a vector is always a vector. Let's look at this example. We could rewrite a as 3i plus 0j plus 8k. Similarly, b could be written as minus i plus 2j plus 9k. And here we have We have negative 16i minus 35j plus 6k. The cross product is orthogonal or perpendicular to the plane of the original two vectors. 
Now let's find the cross product of a vector to itself. Zero i minus zero j plus zero k, which is zero. The magnitude of a cross b is equal to the multiplication of the magnitude of a and b and the sine of the angle between the vectors. If a and b are parallel vectors, the angle between them is zero. So theta would be zero, sine theta would be zero, and if sine theta is zero, the magnitude of A cross B is zero. Let's learn about some properties of the cross product. Firstly, the cross product is not commutative. So vector A cross B is equal to negative B cross A but not equals to B cross A. It is also not associative. Vector A cross B cross C is not equals to vector A cross the vectors of B cross C. However, they are distributive. So vector A cross the addition of vectors B and C is equals to vector A cross B plus vector A cross C. A scalar multiplied by the cross product of vector A and B is equal to the scalar multiplied by vector A cross B and is equal to A multiplied by scalar and is equals to A cross the multiplication of the scalar with vector B. A cross 0 is 0 and similarly 0 cross A is 0. Let's try this example together. We have I J K in the first row D square in the third row. So the cross product of f of t and g of t is To simplify, we have negative d e to the d minus square root of d cos d minus To solve this problem, we would first find e to the t multiplied by g of t and then compute the dot product of this and this. So this has been calculated in the previous example. E 
e to the t g of t is simply to the t multiplied by t over 2 i plus cos t j minus t k. Previously, we've showed that f of t cross g of t is this, and now we would find the dot product between this and this. We would multiply the component i here with this plus this one with this plus this one with this one. This and this could be simplified, as well as this and this. This could be simplified as well.